Hey guys, it's Barrett with The Gaming Camper. Thanks for tuning in to this week's video. This week we're gonna go over how I made a heat shield to go behind my Blackstone griddle that I mounted permanently in my camper. I don't personally think it's necessary. I'm gonna try to get some temperature readings and stuff if I can find my infrared thermometer. I don't use one a lot of times with the griddle. Actually, I've never used it. I've never took it out of the box, but my friends at Tire Minder sent me one and I need to take it out of the box and use it a little bit for projects like this. I started making this heat shield before I actually used it very much and I realized that I probably don't need it but I had it halfway done so I went ahead and finished it. Depending on your specific setup with your camper you may or may not need one but if you want to make one I'm going to share with you how. I will say that I learned the basic technique here from Michael Bracewell. I'm going to give him a shout out in his YouTube channel and he did a very good job with it. His is actually easier to make because it's all flat. And so I'm gonna link that video up here in the corner as well as in the description. You can check that out, but he does an excellent job at a lot of these DIY videos. So what I decided to do was basically the same concept that Michael did. I got some three quarter inch strap steel, which ended up being about 30, $40. It wasn't the cheapest. And I got some, um, welding blanket it's the same welding blanket material that he used in his project and it seems to be really nice it's lightweight it's easy to work with and it cut fine with a normal pair of scissors i kind of didn't know how that was going to go and so basically all you need is the metal some spray paint if you want to make it purdy and protect it from rusting and some rivets and some fender washers so because that I wanted this to go on the area behind the griddle and protect that countertop lip, they, I had to have this so that I could attach this to the back of the, uh, or the front of the cabinet rather, and that this lip would come out over the countertop space. And so that was my primary purpose. A lot of people are worried about splatter, that kind of thing. Me, personally, my outdoor kitchen, I have it there for a reason, it's to use it, and I don't, care if it gets a little bit messy because I consider that a workspace every now and then I clean it off never had any real problems with it and I have used a 17 inch griddle just sitting on top of the capital grill for a year and a half now and I don't personally find it to be that big of a problem but some people have mentioned that they just use a uh, fold out aluminum heat shield and just set it across the drawer slides that is taller so it protects more against the splatter and it's probably an easier project if you want to do it that way. But I like the idea of this, uh, this heat resistant fabric. And so I wanted to go with this. So all that I did was I used a hacksaw to cut these um, pieces of steel off in different sections. And the reason that I have it too wide on the sides is because I cheaped out and got the 24 inch wide fabric instead of the 36 inch because it's quite a price difference. And so I wanted to be sure that I had plenty of workspace in order to attach this to the magnets on the side. And I didn't want to worry about if it was going to be long enough. So I just made it extra wide by one piece. So all I did to bend these pieces is I stuck this down in a vise and I bent it over by hand. And then I used a three pound sledgehammer uh, just to hammer it down where it made this bend here. And then I just put it in a vise where it had enough room to hold it there as close as I could make it. And then I use that three pound sledgehammer to again, bend this the opposite way. So it's not a lot of like measuring that kind of stuff. It's not the most accurate thing, but I think it turned out really well. It's decently straight for doing it by hand. So that was the basic process there. Now I did go ahead and spray paint those metal pieces black. And so basically this is made out of the frame. I'm gonna show you some different pictures. And when I did this, I didn't have the fabric yet. So that's why I didn't have it done when I used the griddle the first time because I was waiting on the fabric to come from Amazon. So what I actually did when I was making the frame is I drilled all these with a drill press because I have one, I've never used it, but I have it. And I thought that'd be a pretty good idea. So I drilled them out. Now, in order to give it a little bit of stability and hold it together so I could pre-drill everything, because you're not going to want to drill it while you have the fabric on there, that's just going to be too much of a hassle, is I took just some bolts, some small bolts, and I put in where each one of these rivets are, 
and I just hand tightened it. And that gave it enough stability that I didn't have to worry about it. As far as the rivets go with this and the stability overall, like it does, it can shift a little bit like um, side to side, but it helped a lot that I put a piece in the center too. And after I put the blanket on there, it's pretty strong. Like if you touch the corners before I put the blanket on there, if you pushed it, it would twist, but it doesn't twist anymore. So the next step after I drilled all those out and had the bolts in there is I took everything back out and I did go over it with another coat of spray paint. Spray paint's not the best. It's already wearing off a little bit, but I just wanted to try to make it look a little bit better. It's not going to affect the way that works at all. And as far as the issues here, I did use aluminum rivets. I thought about using stainless steel, but I was at Tractor Supply and I'm actually going to show you the ones that I used. They worked really well, these did, unless um, if it was two pieces of metal stacked on top of each other and then the blanket and then the washer, that's when I had an issue with some of them expanding enough. But if you were able to push it down in a good set of, uh, I have like some vice grips, they're actually like Craig vice grips, so you use them for like face cabinets and stuff. But I popped those on there to push everything down close and I even caught the edge of the washer with that and it was no problem at all getting most of those in there. Now a couple of them did, I did have to drill out and restart, but it's holding together nice. Now I will say that the washers that I used, they had some at Tractor Supply that worked well with the rivets that I had. And I'm going to list those on here, but they only had a couple. So then I went down to the Home Depot and they didn't have one that had quite as nice of a hole in there. And so I did have to put about eight of these washers in a vise and drill the center of it out. That way the rivet would fit through it. Basically these two uh, supports here, here on the top, I was worried that it would look funky when I did the curve. And so this was to keep those kind of molded, right? They are a little bit thinner than the three quarter inch that I use on everything else, but it's just to help facilitate this curve. And I thought that that would be fun. This did end up being a little bit heavier than what I thought it would be just due to all the steel that I used for the supports and stuff, but it's still not too heavy and it's a nice option if you're needing something like that. In your situation, you may be able to just build a square or just even use the uh, aluminum protector that I talked about before. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.